to begin your watercolor study, you're gonna start with your black and white photograph of the cherries and cut out the border. Once your border is cut out, you're gonna take your piece of carbon paper and lay it on top of the watercolor paper so that the carbon side is facing down. That's the dark side. Line it up in the top left-hand corner and then place your black and white photograph over top. Use your 2H pencil to trace all the contours. When you're done tracing all the contours, double check to make sure that all of those lines have been transferred to the watercolor paper. Now you're ready to start painting. The first thing that you're gonna do when you paint is you're gonna create a monochromatic painting or underpainting for your watercolor. You're gonna use the ultramarine blue color and you're going to use your black and white copy of the photograph to paint in all the shadows or the darker values in your picture. Notice how transparent my paint is. You want to start with a very transparent layer of that ultramarine blue, meaning that you have a lot of water and very little pigment. Watercolor is best when you work in layers, very transparent layers. So I'm starting with a very transparent layer using only my ultramarine color blue and I'm using my black and white color copy of the photograph to paint in all of my darker values. Once I'm done with my first layer of my underpainting, I need to make sure that it's completely dry before I go on to my second layer. So I'm gonna blow dry the paper until it's completely dry. Once my paper is completely dry, I'm ready to add my second layer of my underpainting. I'm still using the ultramarine color blue. This time, I'm gonna go in with slightly more opaque values. This means that I'm gonna have more pigment and a little bit less water, but notice that my colors are still very transparent. Again, I'm using my black and white copy of the picture so that I can look at the values of the cherries and not get distracted by the color. Now I'm ready to add color. I'm gonna look now at my color picture of the cherries and I'm gonna start to add a transparent layer of red right over top of that underpainting. Notice how you can see the shadows showing through underneath the red paint. I'm gonna start with a transparent layer of that red paint just like I did with my blue underpainting. I can also go in and dig out highlights Again, you want to work in layers. So you're not gonna go in with a very dark or opaque layer of that red paint. You wanna always start in a transparent layer and you're probably gonna add three to four layers of this red paint before you decide that you're done with your picture.
in between each layer, you always want to use the blow dryer and make sure that your paper is completely dry before you go and add your next layer. Otherwise, you're going to find that the colors will mix more with each other instead of sitting on top of each other. You also will have more bleeding and you won't be able to keep your edges clean if you do not blow dry in between each of those layers. Once my first layer is completely dry, I can go in and I can start adding my second layer of red over top of the cherries. This time I'm using a little bit more opaque layer of the paint, which means again that I have a little bit more pigment, a little bit less water, but my layer should still be transparent. Now I'm going in and adding my third and fourth layer with the paper and the paint. You wanna keep doing this until you feel like you've created enough value and enough edges and enough layer of paint that you've matched the photograph the best that you can.